Welcome everyone to the Wyoming Women's Business Center webinar series 2020. My name is Christine Langley. I'm going to be your moderator today and we're here for expert insights on crowdfunding. And so I want to call attention to the GoToWebinar control panel on the right hand side of your screen. You'll notice a couple of drop downs. The main one that I want to highlight for you today is the questions panel. This is the way you're going to communicate with me throughout the webinar. So if you have questions right out the bat for some of our experts, go ahead and type those in and I'll be sure to get to those when we get to our Q&A time. Everyone on the webinar that is an attendee is muted um, just to save us on background noise. So that questions panel is primarily where you're going to be able to communicate with us. So I encourage you to use that so that we can definitely get your questions answered. And so to start out today, where I'm just going to get cover a little bit of information about the Wyoming Women's Business Center so that you know who we are. And then we'll dive into our experts and introduce you to them and get our Q&A started. And then again, at the end, we'll follow up with any audience questions. So the Wyoming Women's Business Center is a nonprofit organization, and we exist to assist individuals who want to start or expand a small business specifically in the state of Wyoming. And so we do this through four distinct programs. The first is our business training and counseling program. The second is our access to capital or microloan and individual development account programs. The third is our professional artist development center. And we run that in conjunction with our Works of Wyoming retail store and our Art Connect gallery in downtown Laramie. And then our fourth is the COVID-19 support program. And our crowdfunding experts are here today in support of our COVID-19 program. And so it is one of the primary services that we're offering in our COVID-19 support program. So if you'd like more information on the COVID-19 support program, you can contact our program facilitator, Veronica Donahue. Her information's up on the screen right now. We encourage you to reach out to her. Um, but of course, today is our focus on crowdfunding campaign support. So diving right in to our experts today, we're going to start with Jessica Brower. Jessica's going to turn on her webcam and say hello to everyone. Hello, Miss Jessica. And Jessica, hello. hello, hello. And I will let you introduce yourself. Go right ahead. Yeah, my name is Jessica Brower, and I am the Outreach and Crowdfunding Counselor for the Wyoming Women's Business Center. Wyoming Women's Business Center COVID-19 support program. Uh, um, I was asked to join this team in the wake of COVID um, last spring and have been working with um, local entrepreneurs like who all is on this call, I imagine, um, on digital outreach, things like social media and um, email campaigns, as well as using crowdfunding as a tool to raise capital as well as, well as awareness for their business. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to go to our next expert that's on the call, Scott. We'll let you do your little intro and turn on your webcam. Hello, hello. All right. It looked like I froze there for a minute. Hi. Um, joining you from Boise, Idaho. Uh, I'm the uh, Director of Relationships and Marketing with Crowdfund Better, and uh, we partnered with the Women's Business Center there in Wyoming to provide uh, crowdfunding, initial crowdfunding support, really provide a, a roadmap, uh, that actually what it's called, a crowdfunding roadmap on uh, really some milestones and statistics on what you can expect when looking to crowdfund as a small business or entrepreneur or artist or nonprofit. But obviously with COVID uh, program, it's really only focusing on the entrepreneurs and uh, small business owners, uh, which would include you artists because uh, you want to run your arts as business. Nonetheless, uh, happy to be joining and uh, looking forward to contributing on the panel today. All right, awesome. Welcome, Scott. All right, next up we have Caitlin. We're going to have Caitlin turn on her webcam and say hello to everybody. Hello, hello. Hi, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Caitlin Heller, and I have been working for the local crowd as a success coach for a little over a year now. I really enjoy getting the opportunity to work with small businesses like yours, to help you gain capital in a non-traditional format such as crowdfunding. I hope I get the opportunity to work with each and every one of you joining this webinar. Awesome, terrific. Thanks so much, Caitlin. And then next up is Diane. Welcome, Diane. 
Thank you. I'm delighted to be here, and I'm Diane Santum, and I have a long um, history with the Women's Business Center. I was part of the original founding board, and so 23 or so years ago, this was just a glimmer in our eyes, and so I'm really grateful that uh, to see it blossoming today and to be part of this. And I've been in economic development in Wyoming as a state director of the Wyoming Small Business Development Center and a capital program, Wyoming Smart Capital Network. And now I'm an entrepreneur and owner and co-founder of The Local Crowd. Terrific, terrific, awesome. Thank you for joining us. And so now I'm just gonna have everybody, all of our panelists turn on their webcams so that we can see it. Thank you, thank you. And we're just gonna dive in to some questions. And again, I'll keep monitoring the questions panel to see what other questions our audience is entering. So I wanna start out um, to help us understand really what exactly a crowdfunding campaign is. And so how would you define crowdfunding? Really give us a clear definition of what crowdfunding is for small business. And so I'm gonna throw this to Scott first. Great, well, thank you, Christine. Uh, well, yeah, the definition of crowdfunding, let's just start with that, right? It's small amounts of money from a large group of people. Uh, and that's not necessarily limited to just your regional or your hometown location. In this day and age, crowdfunding has really been able to blossom on the internet uh, and be made possible uh, to really rally your community, whatever that community may be, uh, whether that's a digital uh, or a physical or a combination of, of both. Uh, so uh, I would say, um, you know, you can kind of look at it as a, if you're looking for $10,000, how do you break that down? Well, you can have one person to give you $10,000 or you can try and get maybe 10 people to give you $1,000 or maybe 100 people at $100 each or even better, uh, possibly, if you have a very large network with a lot of college students, a thousand people at ten dollars. So all the same, it all adds up to ten thousand dollars. It's just how do you get that support from your community? Okay, that makes sense. And then, um, Caitlin, I'll just kind of ask you a follow up to that. You know, when when people ask you what you do, you know, as the success coach um, at the local crowd for crowdfunding campaigns, how do you how do you describe to people what crowdfunding is? Yeah, so I, I always like to tell people crowdfunding is a way to gain capital by inviting members of the community to contribute to your business's project. Um, instead of applying for funding through channels such as a small business loan. Um, and you know, it's also a really great way to connect with those people in your community that may not know you're there. All right, very good. Jessica, anything to add to that? When you have people calling in and talking to you about crowdfunding, that came through the COVID-19 support program. What's the message that you're trying to get through to them as to, as to what crowdfunding is and, and how it could work for them? Yeah, I mean, everything Scott and Caitlin touched on is huge. Obviously, um, people are initially drawn to crowdfunding because of its benefits to support and capital raising. Um, but the thing I really talk to my clients about is this idea that we're also crowdsourcing awareness and, um, and people around whatever business or project um, an entrepreneur is launching, whether that's a new service or a mission for their community or a product um, that they're trying to sell. Crowdfunding is ideally raising money, but it is also raising attention and awareness and creating customers to support their business as they move forward after their campaign. So it's like marketing, but you get to raise money too. Yeah, bonus. <laughs> bonus. Bonus. You get money while you market, you know, what you're doing and, and your program. Um, and so, Diane, as a co-founder of The Local Crowd, um, can you tell me more about how The Local Crowd is different from a site like GoFundMe? Yeah, thanks for asking that, because what we actually, it was built from the ground up to be a local crowdfunding platform, hence the name The Local Crowd. So that means that you, uh, we base it our science on that we know that most of the dollars that come to a campaign come from the activities of the team. So when you are locally, when you're located and your whole community knows about it, then you, you kind of really leverage your localness to reach out. So that's part of it. And then because it's so local, it has things like um, 
matching grants that can be added or matching contributions or um, sponsored rewards, which means that maybe you have friends, maybe all of you that are in this cohort with the Women's Business Center can offer rewards to each other's campaigns, or you know somebody in a downtown shop, coffee shop that can offer a gift certificate. So sponsored rewards is another part that's really um, part of the local crowd. And, the, and, and this is really kind of the technology part. And then also the offline fundraising. So if you have an event, where you people come and bring money and they donate it, you could add that in on the back end and show it on your thermometer of your campaign. So those are some real localized um, aspects of our platform. So it sounds like you're able to customize more things to your local community than you would be able to do in kind of a generic funding site like GoFundMe. Exactly. Okay. Um, Jessica, anything to add to that? Um, I mean, I think Diane touched on uh, the the big thing there, which is that the local crowd was created with rural roots, and everybody on this call has those same rural roots. And I think um, that requires a unique uh, approach and uh, perhaps a different set of tools. And so I think that is what makes the platform so valuable um, within these communities in you know throughout Wyoming is that that has been um, that has been considered through the education, through the platform, um, all of that. And so I think a different uh, platform like Indiegogo or Kickstarter, while they have churned out campaigns that have raised millions for projects, um, I don't think that they um, are a niche that fits rural in the same way that the local crowd does. Makes sense, makes sense. All right. Um, so I've had some clients tell me that they really hate asking people for money, right? So I want to start with Scott and just say, what advice do you typically give small businesses? I assume this is not a new fear or objection. Um, and so no. what advice do you give small businesses to really overcome kind of their mental block um, around this new way to, or innovative way to raise capital? There's, there's a couple different ways you can approach it, right? I mean, the, 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 the first thing, just as a small business owner that I would look into or consider is, you know, do you offer coupons or discounts or promote your business in general? Like, like we said earlier, you know, crowdfunding is like marketing your business with maybe a little extra cash at the end, uh, but also even more so, like we said, the non-financial benefits of really getting awareness. So, you know, it, if you look at it as a, as a marketing exercise with potentially more than just a sale, uh, because you can build relationships and build an audience with a crowdfunding campaign because it's a very focused, specific kind of um, moment in time that's not just a, a fleeting sale or coupon in that sense, right? There's more to it. Uh, so really, that's uh, you know, if you look at it as an exercise in marketing, that's going to help build your business community. Uh, both with vendors, suppliers, and, you know, end purchasers and clients, uh, you really can not look at it as a way of, of begging or desperation, right? O often we have a lot of folks that come to us uh, at Crowdfund Better and say, you know, I'm, I'm not desperate, I'm not begging, I don't want to seem like I'm groveling for money on, you know, panhandling on the corner, uh, you know, how, how do I not do that? Well, and ultimately it boils down to storytelling. Uh, how are you telling your story? If you come out saying, help me, help me, then you're going to look desperate. But if you say, I'm giving you an opportunity to support my business in a meaningful way that not only helps our business achieve, you know, the, the end goal or project or funding to buy a new piece of equipment so we can be able to better serve or produce more products or, or goodies, you know, whether that's a cafe or a market or restaurant. Uh, so, you know, ultimately it goes down to storytelling. If you frame your story in a way that you're giving your community a way to, to support you in a way that's not purely financial, but also a way to continue being in business. I mean, right, this is the whole point of this program is it's based on COVID effect uh, to your business. So how can your community support you? This is one way. Excellent. Excellent. Caitlin, any uh, words of wisdom that you give to clients when they're feeling a little intimidated or are nervous um, about doing a capital raise through crowdfunding? Yeah, so it's an interesting fact. Um, research actually shows that people in the community are more likely to donate when they know that their contribution is going to make an impact in their community. Um, so that's, like Scott, Scott said, 
that's why telling your story is so important. Um, you really want to have a solid story before you launch your campaign, before you go out into the public with it. Okay. And then Jessica, what kind of support are we offering our COVID-19 clients around storytelling and really building this campaign? Because I know other business owners might be saying to themselves, well, that sounds great, but I have no idea what story I should tell or, or even where to start. Yeah, and I mean, that's something that I work on all of my clients um, with is their storytelling, whether they're working with me in crowdfunding or not. I mean, it's something I uh, talk about um, probably an obnoxious amount. And that's the first <laughs> thing I talk to any client about when we get on the phone is um, who is your ideal customer? What are you, you know, what are you trying to do here? What, how are you using language to tell that story? Um, so I think there's support through the whole the whole process of, you know, you call WWBC, you become a client, you get on the phone with me, we're going to talk about your story, and I'm going to provide, re, you know, resources and feedback on how to do that together. Um, and I'm available to support in various capacities for that, whether that's finding um, webinars or TED Talks or worksheets or assignments, um, or just chatting about it in routine phone calls. Um, from there, you know, we're going to move into the local crowds training, which is going to talk about storytelling. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's even more of it. Um, you're going to talk to Scott and he's going to talk to you about your story. <laughs> so I think there's, um, we come at it from many different angles because it is uh, it is so important, but it certainly isn't something that we, you know, you're going to hop on the phone and we're going to ask you what your story is and expect you to tell us right off the bat. <laughs> so, so the punchline here is that we cover you up with support and there's no way you can go through this program with us and not come out with a story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, what, is what it sounds like. So, so getting a little bit deeper into if if clients enrolled in this program, you know, where would they start? We know that they're going to start with Jessica, um, just getting a sense of of their business and and a little bit about crafting their story, and then we're going to throw them to Scott. So, when they get into Scott's crowdfund better program, Scott, tell us what that looks like, like a week in the life, or how long is the training? What's the commitment? Well, it's not a lion's den or a snake pit or anything. So, you know, fear not, we're, we're, we actually care. Uh, and that's often a, 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 a statement that a lot of our clients say is the fact that we care about, you know, like Jessica and everyone has said about empathy, right? We have, we have a certain level of empathy. We're not looking at you to tell you you're stupid or anything. We really want to support you in having your best chances of success. Because ultimately that wins for everybody, right? Not just for your business and your community, but for all of us supporting you. I mean, we're not in this business to not help you. Um, so you start with filling out an assessment, an online assessment and asking, you know, most folks can take about 20 minutes, you know, maybe an hour, uh, depending on how in depth you want to answer the questions that we have on there. You submit that and then, then it comes to me and I create, I compile a crowdfunding report, uh, which I try to do that within three business days. So you can actually continue moving forward. We don't try to drag our feet with this. Uh, but it does involve compiling data over 500,000 campaigns that we will refer to uh, to give you kind of a, a marker of what the reality is in your industry and the type of campaign that you've had within the overall crowdfunding industry, right? Beyond the local crowd, but even among Kickstarter, Indiegogo, all the other uh, platforms out there. So you get a, a kind of a healthy dose of reality. We provide examples of uh, campaigns similar to yours, whether that's in goal or industry or kind of the project nature. Uh, and then we give you areas to focus on that you can actually take action on and start improving your business uh, from step one, even if you don't end up crowdfunding. Uh, and ultimately that focuses on how can you tell your story? Um, and often we'll refer to more of the nuts and bolts of that. So you have the tools to know because a lot of people say build your audience, but then how do you do that, right? So we try to give you those focus areas to really give you the how and the what uh, to be able to do that. And then you'd be able to work with uh, Jessica and Caitlin to further uh, develop your story after that. All right, terrific. And then Caitlin, where do you come in into the fold here? Yeah, so um, once you guys complete your assessment with Scott, Jess and I will invite you to meet us in a webinar where we'll kind of touch base about, you know, again, what crowdfunding is and what you have forward to look, look forward to. Um, and then after that, I'm going to send um, people that are looking to crowdfund training materials. So we have 
five different weeks worth of training materials. Um, I'll send out every week. Um, we can take that at whatever pace you want. So whether that's every week, every other week, once a month. Um, and then throughout that process, I'm gonna help you guys build your campaign on our platform. Um, and then following up, once your campaign has launched, I'll be there for support throughout its duration. And then once it's ended, I'm gonna be there to still support you as far as you getting out your rewards, following up, sending your thank yous, that kind of stuff. All right, so lots of support, lots of hand holding through this process. Um, and I do just wanna to mention to all of our clients that the hard costs associated with um, running a campaign on the local crowd, plus going through the crowdfund better assessment process with Scott, if you were to do this on your own, would be a cost of around $600. And then with the additional counseling support that you get from Jessica, which really, I mean, we can't put a value on it, right? It's so high. Um, but this is a great deal for anybody that comes through the COVID-19 program um, because you're getting all of the support and the Women's Business Center is covering that cost for you through the grant that we received from the CARES Act. So government dollars put to good work is what I like to say. All right, I'm gonna transition into some scenario-based questions, gonna give kind of each of you a scenario business and ask you um, if I were to come to you to start a crowdfunding campaign, what are the first steps you recommend I complete if I'm a specific type of business? So I wanna pull Diane back in and ask Diane if I um, did artisanal products, like say I made soap or I was a small jewelry maker, um, what kind of advice would you give to me as far as what my first step should be for that type of business? Yeah, well, there, uh, I guess one is know your um, timeline. It does take time to learn these things and to implement them. So we recommend like 90 days to do that because crowdfunding isn't rocket science, but it is a science. And all these great support people you have are gonna teach you the proven methods that work. So make that timeline. And then also, um, because you have a product like soap or jewelry or whatever it is that you're making, you'll likely be pre-selling that product as your rewards. And so you really want to know your costs, um, how much it costs you to make it, how much, you know, what your pricing is so that when you offer it, online you'll be able to make money with it and and you know include the shipping and all those other things so those are those are some of the important things i would say to get started okay terrific all right and now i'm going to throw it over to jessica jessica your scenario is an in-home daycare wants a new television for learning videos what are some of the first steps that you would encourage them to do um, well, surprise, surprise, my first step would be to think about your story <laughs> um, and to think, um, you know, what is the actual narrative that's here? Um, while we know you want to purchase a television, um, what will really bolster your story is why, why do you want that TV? What are you going to use it for? Are you just going to, you know, watch the news while the kids are around? Probably not. You're going to, you know, implement programming. Um, it's going to help you with um, presenting materials. It's going to help you provide a better service for these kids that these parents clearly want to have a good service for um, when they're in your care. So I would, um, that would be the first thing would be to really nail that down and to figure out um, what is this value that you're adding to your business and to your audience? Um, because this story is going to be the story you're going to use to both motivate folks to contribute funds, but also to motivate yourself and your team to continue to work on the project. And I think it's very important that it reads as um, genuine and um, that it's going to be valuable to everybody who's involved. Excellent. All right, Caitlin, you're up next. Um, and your scenario is a restaurant that needs to add, let's say, a drive up window. What recommendations do you have? Um, yeah, so this is a really relevant scenario, um, especially during this COVID crisis that we're living in. Um, so like Jess, I believe the best first step is you could start with your why. You know, ask yourself, why am I adding this window to my business? Is it for the safety of my customers? Does it help my business survive during COVID? Um, so once you have answered this question, as a business owner, you should create a plan to work on your campaign. 
you know, how many weeks will it take for me to dedicate to planning this? Who's going to be on my team to help me, you know, launch this campaign and put it together? Very good. Very good. All right, Scott, um, if you've worked with some of our clients already, you know that um, I want to say our top category of client at the Women's Business Center is yoga instructors. This is a, a hot business for um, women entrepreneurs. So um, your scenario is I'm a yoga instructor and I want to purchase some video equipment because I need to transition my um, classes to online instead of in person during COVID-19. So what are, what are your recommendations? Yeah, whether it's hot yoga or not, right? Because that sweat factor, you know, you might need an extra towel. Um, but yeah, I would say that that is a perfect example. We have had uh, clients from the Women's Business Center there in Wyoming, uh, specifically yoga instructors, uh, come through already uh, this program uh, and not exclusively for online equipment or video equipment, um, but we've had other clients doing that as well. So it's been, it's been, that's a nice blending question, Christine, of multiple clients through the Women's Business Center there. Um, so yeah, what do you do, right? Well, the first question is, you know, obviously uh, financial. What's what's the costs really associated? Drill down, drilling down your budget, and that's a beautiful thing, having this opportunity to work in conjunction with the Women's Business Center because you've got experts like Jessica and other consultants through the but through the business center that can really help you drill down onto getting your finances together and figuring it out and budgeting appropriately. So you're also making a rewards. Uh, positive <laughs> as opposed to costing you more than you're actually gaining from the rewards uh, and then also finding out honestly really really finding out how your clients want that to be delivered you know is that going to be through a YouTube uh, channel is that going to be through a subscription model and you need to upgrade your website there's a lot of other costs that may be associated with that conversion of your business from in person to online and knowing that because I've had some clients where they have maybe a more older uh, demographic that uh, technology isn't so friendly. So how is that going to be delivered? Is that going to be pre-taped, uh, sent through email? Well, you're going to also then have to develop your email marketing. So there's a lot of other things that come to just um, needing to develop that, uh, as, as Jessica said, you know, in advance of launching your campaign, because there are other aspects that you might need to organize and prepare to be able to deliver on what you're actually raising the funds for uh, ultimately. Yeah, good point about um, knowing your budget, especially when it comes to the rewards. So planning our work and then working our plan is what rings true to me with what you just said. For sure. All right, we've got a little audience question that I just wanna throw in here to Diane um, before, I, before we talk about successful campaigns um, and kind of wrap uh, and so, Diane, the question is, my company is a Wyoming C Corp, and the company is authorized to issue common and preferred stock. Can this be incorporated into crowdfunding? And if so, how? Well, um, it can be. Um, the, actually, the, the local crowd is, is a rewards-based platform, which doesn't deal with equity. So when you're selling um, stock in your company, that's an equity raise. So you, um, you wouldn't be able to use the local crowd to raise money for your, uh, to sell your stock. However, you could do a campaign selling rewards, pre-selling products, doing any of the, these things we already talked about, but it's not going to be, um, you're not going to be selling stock um, ownership. Now, um, if you on the local crowd, they wouldn't be doing it on the local crowd because our platform no. is set up as a rewards-based system. Right. However, I would call the Secretary of State of the state of Wyoming because the state has um, set up a, a equity-based crowdfunding mechanism through the state of Wyoming. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Thank and I you. I could jump on that question too, if, if you like, Christine, since, you know, as Crowdfund Better, we are more of the ecosystem of, of crowdfunding and not exclusive to donation rewards or, or what we, we call the investment crowdfunding is, is what that question is really asking about, where you can have opportunities for your community to not only support you financially, but actually have literal investment in your business. And that can come in a lot of different stripes, right? There's uh, equity shares, things like that. 
there's debt or revenue based offerings as well, where instead of going to a traditional lender that your community essentially loans you that and then based on what you write out in your offering, uh, you can actually then kind of dictate the, uh, the details, you know, and obviously 100% recommend working with a securities lawyer if you're looking into anything in investment crowdfunding because not only is there upfront costs uh, legally and financially, depending on the amount that you're looking to raise, but also just for the fact of having the proper legal advice, you know, not, not every business lawyer is uh, a securities lawyer, right? So you have to have the right kind of advice because often we've seen uh, clients that have had um, interactions with lawyers that aren't securities lawyers uh, really get a lot of poor advice because they don't know anything about it. So that's where I would highly recommend speaking with a securities lawyer. And the beautiful thing with our crowdfunding uh, roadmap uh, that you do through the Women's Bi Business Center is by filling that out, we can actually provide you examples as well and recommendations for investment campaigns. Uh, that's part of the questionnaire that you can answer. So if you do have that interest, uh, that we can still go over that even if ultimately you may not end up going uh, through the local crowd for an investment offering, but definitely know there's going to be upfront legal and financial costs that can start at five to fifteen thousand dollars. So uh, another strategy to incorporating that. Sorry for taking so much length on this, but this is a unique opportunity that's only been really available since 2016. And this, the SEC actually just ruled recently on extending uh, benefits and, and offerings as well. Uh, like Diane said, though, state offerings, if you're really only looking to focus on Wyoming, uh, for Wyoming, uh, to be able to support you, you can also look into state offerings, which may not be as expensive uh, to, to be able to raise funds uh, within the state as well. So a couple different options available, but we can at least provide some guidance on that, uh, even on just the upfront, what you can expect. <laughs> All right. So what I heard was regardless of what type of crowdfunding campaign you want to do, um, crowdfund better, the assessment that you go through with Scott can help you determine potentially what platform or options are available to you. If you yep. choose to do a rewards-based platform, that's what we are offering through the local crowd. Um, and so, Caitlin, can you just one more time, because I do have some additional questions coming in, asking us to specifically define what a rewards-based platform is versus these other platforms. So let's just focus in on rewards right now. And can you give an example of like what donators would receive through a reward campaign? Yeah, so you could, I mean, as far as rewards, you could have gift cards. Um, like to your local coffee shop. Um, you could have jewelry made by somebody local. You could have a painting that um, was done and has been donated to your campaign by someone local. Um, there's soaps or um, you could even, you know, have something as a membership. You can offer a membership to your yoga studio or something like that. It's more of a tangible mm -hmm. item that you get in return for your donation. All right. So a reward is essentially um, some kind of a gift that you are given after you submit a donation. I'd yeah. say yeah. so. Can I jump in on that as well? Yes. Um, because I, I think about it in three three buckets. Is one is like a gift, something tangible, but then there's also um, events and uh, you know things that you you could host a party or or an online event or a tour or something like that um, that might be unique an opportunity to interview we, we had a playwright that had an opportunity to interview um, a, a play a playwright so or to, to meet with people even virtually I mean now we have to change it a little bit but th so that's events um, items and then the third one is like um, naming so maybe somebody, if you have a restaurant, somebody wants to name a menu item or name a room in your restaurant or put a name on your brick or some, you know, something that, you know, it appeals to somebody's um, sense of self or ego a little bit. So there's different ways that, so, you know, the, the physical things are going to cost you money, 
the events will maybe cost you some money if you have a cooking class or something, but maybe not cost you too much. And the naming doesn't really cost you so much, but it is exclusive because you're only offering one person the opportunity to name that room. And so it can be a little higher ticket for that. Okay, that was really helpful. So three areas, naming, events, and gifts or physical items. All right, so let's, <laughs> okay, so let's talk about successful campaigns. Um, and so I wanna start with uh, Diane. Diane, what do you feel all successful campaigns have in common? I know you've been been with local, you know, you've you found a local crowd, you've been with them for, uh, you know, a while now. You must have seen some trends. And so what's a what's a highlight or a trend that you see? Yeah, well, there, I'd like to answer that kind of on two levels. Is one is the data level, um, because we know by the data worldwide that the campaigns that meet 30% of their goal in the first few days um, are the ones who can meet their goals. So you want to have pre-committed um, people into your campaign so that when you push that launch button, your numbers start going up and up and up and up, and people see that this is a happening place. They see that the campaign has been social proofed because it means that other people have said, wow, I trust them and I want to, I want to be part of this. And so you really want to work to have 30% um, of your campaign funded. And then on the second level, I want to answer that on the emotional level and what it takes to do it. And I have a very quick story I want to tell about that in my own experience, and, and this might seem unrelated, but it will come back around. Is um, years ago, I was speaking at a national conference and I was part of the board and this conference was uh, at a beautiful site in, in Georgia, and, but it was booked three years before. And the organization had grown in those three years. And so when people came to the conference, it was, the place was too small and the rooms were too small. And so people um, you know, would come to a, a class and they, they couldn't get in. And so people were frustrated and and so when I went to speak there, I um, had in my mind more than anything, a desire to make people have fun and enjoy it. And so my heart was out to them. And, and all I wanted, and you know, when you speak, you have all these nerves and are they gonna like me and all that stuff. I just replaced that with my desire to make them enjoy the event and so bringing this back to crowdfunding it's when you're asking and you talk about is it hard to ask and and um it's and amanda palmer you should watch this um, ted talk amanda palmer the art of asking she says asking is not begging it's connecting and so when your heart is connected and you know your why and you say i want you my contributor to be the one that is so delighted to give that changes everything and that's the thing that that's the engine behind successful campaigns is that connecting with people and knowing that what you're offering is them an opportunity to come into your story and share it with you so that's what i see as the a really important thing is to is to believe in what you do so much that you know the people who connect with you are going to be blessed by that connection. Excellent, excellent. All right, so belief, and if you can pre-raise 30% before your campaign launches, that gives you a good head start to reaching your goal. All right, Caitlin, um, anything that you've noticed as far as a trend with success, successful campaigns and what successful campaigns have in common? Yeah, so um, in my experience, all successful campaigns generally have a team of four or more working as a united front to build that campaign and to push it out. You got someone focusing on marketing and someone focusing on putting the rewards together. So really just having a solid team of four or more people. All right, great. Jessica, any tips? 
Yeah, I mean, for me, um, I talk to my clients a lot about what happens on the subconscious level when we engage with messaging from a business, whether that's with crowdfunding or not. And I think subconsciously as an audience, we can really sniff out a campaign that doesn't, that feels half-baked, that, you know, it feels like they don't have clarity on what their goal is or what their vision is. And just like Diane touched on, they don't have the heart in it, you know, you know, if it's like a, a panicked kind of desperation, um, not not totally thoughtful, intentional campaign. I think an audience notices that whether they're aware of that or not. So I think the the most successful campaigns I've seen, they have clarity and consistency in their story, of course, and in all of their messaging, whether that's on Facebook, in their emails, when they're talking to their friends, when they're asking for support. I mean, I think that is huge. The vision is is huge. All right, and then Jessica, I'm just gonna stick with you and weave in an audience question here. Um, Cause again, I think people are just trying to clarify um, what the local crowd can do versus what they need to be doing on their own to be prepared to launch a crowdfunding campaign. And so the question is the local crowd is a platform that acts as the quote vehicle to get the word out or does one, does a business actually have to have all the social media and email lists kind of set up already so that they can push out the crowdfunding, you know, campaign and the local crowd is just the technology that it sits on? Yeah, the local crowd is the technology that it sits on. So I would want you to think about your local crowd campaign as almost the same way that you would think about your website that has your e-commerce listing on it. Um, so it is there, it's on the internet. Um, you can find it from anywhere in the world, but strangers aren't going to stumble into it and give you money just because. <laughs> you have to create the messaging to send people to that platform to see all of these things in an organized way. Um, I've explained this to um, clients that I've worked with who really struggle with just the idea of online shopping, honestly, um, and I compared it to a catalog. You know, the local crowd is the catalog that you get to thumb through and find the thing that you want. Um, and so it's your job to get the catalog into the hands of the people um, so they can shop, if that makes sense. It does. It does. And then an another thing I'd like you to touch on, Jessica, because one of the things that Caitlin mentioned was, you know, um, if you can have, you know, a team of three or four people that can mm -hmm. help to put this campaign together, that that she has seen that be really successful. Um, but as mm -hmm. you know, with our clients, we deal with primarily micro businesses, which which are really one woman shows, right? <laughs> so yeah. um, so recognizing that the majority of our clientele, you know, are one woman shows. Um, how do you overcome that barrier or potential barrier when you've just got one person that, how, how do they pull off one of these campaigns if, if it's just them? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one of those things that I can be, a, I, or I do believe can be a barrier to entry in, in our own minds. You know, it's like, oh, I don't have three people I can ask to help me. Um, first and foremost, you already have two people because I'm on your team. <laughs> so, there you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, from there, uh, you know, I have clients who, you know, I'll talk to them about um, their grandkids who are on social media and help them understand and help them research and help them set up pages, their sisters, their spouses, their friends, you know, uh, and that's where that story comes in. Again, you know, if you, if you have a vision for what you want, when you go to your grandkids and say, I'm doing this thing, but you know, Facebook and me, it's kind of scary. Can you help me out a bit? They're probably going to help you out. And then they're on your team. You know, it's not, you don't need to hire a marketing consultant and a videographer and a, you know, a, accountants and all of these things. You just need people who believe in you. And I guarantee whoever's on this call and whoever has a vision, you have people who believe in you. And so that's how you start to, to build out that team. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Caitlin, I've got another audience question. I'm going to throw this one to you. Um, my business is mental health and she wants to increase community awareness um, for some specialty services that she offers or a particular niche. And so she's brainstorming on what a reward could be. And she's asking, so could I offer a consultation for like one or two free sessions? And would that be considered rewards-based? 
Oh, absolutely. You could definitely do that. You could also offer something like, you know, first five visits, 20% off, or you could give them like a discount on a year long session type package. Um, so there's definitely a lot of rewards that you can base around these mental awareness appointments or um, items. You can even create items to go with it. Very nice. Very nice. And so I think what, it, what I really want the audience to hear is that you don't need to come up with this on your own. <laughs> you know, sign up for the COVID-19 program, get a meeting with Jessica and let us start helping you to brainstorm on all the different rewards um, you could offer and, and the, the different concepts and ideas, because guaranteed between Jessica, Caitlin, you know, Scott and Diane, we, they're going to be able to come up with some amazing reward-based systems that, that will work for your business. And so, you know, step one is, is to reach out to us and just say, I need help. And I think that's not only is it hard, you know, for a lot of business owners to ask other people for money um, if they don't have their story down, um, but it's also our hard to ask for help. And, and so that's, that's really our first, um, our first call to action is, is sign up so that we can, so that we can at least have that first meeting. Um, Scott, do you have anything to add as far as successful campaigns and, and things that you've seen that work? Well, yeah, I mean, as, as was stated earlier, you know, statistically, uh, teams of four or more are most successful, but that doesn't preclude you from being successful. Jessica totally hit it on the head in the sense that, you know, part of that organizing and preparation before your launch is communicating with your with your community, with your friends and family on, uh, you know, what you're looking to do, what you're thinking about. They can provide a lot of input and support in advance of the campaign that may not be financially uh, supporting you in a way, but then it also could end up not costing you as much to actually run the campaign because of that. If somebody knows how to do social media, you're not paying a, a marketing uh, team to do that. If somebody knows how to edit videos, you're not paying a videographer or an editor for that. There's a lot of ways that you can do that. Um, and yeah, obviously telling the story, it, it starts from way before the campaign page, uh, right? So, you know, we, we like to say that uh, crowdfunding is a uh, organizing event for your business and a motivating event for your community, right? Because really it's it's gonna provide all of that input uh, to, to really make that a successful campaign. Uh, so um, I think, you know, that consistency communication and containers, you can look at it in three ways, right? You have to be able to communicate, be willing to ask, be willing to talk and ask for help. And uh, having the containers or the tools to be able to, to communicate effectively, right? Because just because you may not be a social media maven doesn't mean you can't use a tool to schedule out posts well in advance. So that way it's less time consuming and less overwhelming and a little bit more uh, prepared and kind of consistent, which is the other side of it too. Ultimately, you can't just send one email, you can't just send one text, you can't just make one phone call and expect the world to come you know, raining down money on your campaign it's 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 going to be multiple things everybody's busy and and now you know with people being more online you know uh, hoping that a facebook post is going to communicate at all uh, for the whole campaign is 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 uh not going to really be a winning recipe let's say uh so and and we've found that we work a lot with a lot of women's business centers uh, outside of wyoming as well and uh, women usually want to be super prepared, have everything 100% dialed in uh, before they even ask a question, right? And that's the other side of it, the, the, the willingness uh, to, to stretch and, and ask uh, for support. Because often you've probably got more people in your network that you don't even realize are willing to support you and they've always wanted to. And that's actually a, a secret to a lot of campaign success. We found the folks that have never asked for help are often the most successful because now you're giving your network and your community an opportunity to support you in a way that they weren't able to before. Nobody wants to be like, here, let me give you money. But if you give them an opportunity to support you through the crowdfunding campaign, now it's not desperation, but it's also now they have a way, a tangible way that they know can make a difference, uh, not only in your life or in your business, but also in your community. It's like the friend that um, you want to get a gift for, but you can't figure out what they need or want. And then they give you an idea and you get so excited. 
<laughs> yep. Because now you finally have somewhere where you can funnel. Oh, I can do that. Yeah, exactly. You, you can funnel your appreciation, but um, but they have to know, right? Yeah, so, and that's where the thing gives you that place. Excellent. So Diane, I'll throw this um, audience question to you um, because I know you know about our contract um, that we did with the Women's Business Center. Does the local crowd take a percentage of the total funds from the campaign for being on the platform? Well, the answer is um, yes and no. Uh, we do take a, a 5% platform fee, which is uh, industry, industry standard. But because of the contract with the Women's Business Center, all the people who come in through this COVID program will not have to pay that 5%. Um, so that's a real, real benefit of being part of this. And then also, uh, just so you'll know, there is still, when, when uh, money comes in through a credit card, the credit card processor does charge a fee, and that's about 3%. And that, that's universal. You, anytime you use a credit card processor, it will be about that. Great. So the Women's Business Center is covering your cost for being on the platform. And all you have to do is sign up through the COVID-19 program, and then you get access to all of these resources. And the sign up is really simple. It's on our website. It's a one, it's barely even a one page um, application. And everything is free um, because this is a program being run through the CARES Act funding that got passed down from the Small Business Administration. And of course, we thank them for their support. So I just want to wrap up with some encouragement here. Um, I, I have a couple of messages from different audience members that, that essentially says, you know, I wasn't ever able to get funding from the CARES Act. And um, now, you know, events have been canceled, you know, everything was canceled for the season for their business. And they just, they're, they're feeling bummed out, right? <laughs> um, just, just not happy and, and not supported. And so, you know, Jessica, do you want to maybe talk a little bit about um, kind of the support that we offer clients and the things that we can do through this crowdfunding program to kind of raise or, um, increase the mood, I would say, <laughs> around the possibilities. Yeah, I mean, every business is unique. And so your needs are going to be unique. However, I think all of us as business owners are connected by this time that is um, really uncomfortable, <laughs> for lack of better word. And I think this service that we're providing through the Women's Business Center I would love to be able to tell you like, get on the phone with me and we're gonna raise you $5,000. Um, I can't guarantee you that, but what I can guarantee is if you get on the phone, we're gonna rally around something that can support you. Um, and maybe that's making you feel more confident on social media so one day you can start a crowdfunding campaign. Maybe that's getting you more comfortable with the idea of asking for help so you could send some cold calls or cold emails. Um, maybe that's uh, getting you set up to launch a campaign so you can raise some money to support you, you know, to recoup some of those funds that you lost because of the pandemic. Um, you know, I can't say specifically what we can do for you and what problems we can solve, but I can guarantee that every person on this team will listen to you <laughs> and help you, um, you know, help you attack some goal um, that will support you. Excellent. Excellent. Does anybody else on the panel have anything to add just to offer some encouragement to these business owners that, you know, are just feeling like this whole COVID thing is a marathon and yeah. they're not sure if they're going to finish it? <laughs> it is a marathon, right? I mean, it, it, life is a marathon. Crowdfunding is a marathon. Being a business owner is a marathon. It's all a marathon. So how, how much are you uh, stretched, amped and ready to roll? Um, we've worked with a lot of businesses that have been affected with COVID, uh, with COVID, by COVID or with COVID, sometimes both, unfortunately. Um, but the, uh, you know, if you haven't been eligible for EIDL or PPP or other uh, even state level uh, offerings that I know have been available, but through some states, uh, that doesn't exclude you from crowdfunding, fortunately. You, you don't have to wait for permission uh, when it comes to crowdfunding, as long as you build your audience in your community, uh, you can possibly actually leverage your crowdfunding campaign to then become more eligible 
uh, towards uh, other means of funding through maybe more traditional ways, uh, whether that's using that as collateral or um, you know operational capital to then be able to qualify for loans or grants or other options uh, that you may not have been able to do uh, previously, right? Because ultimately this can be considered revenue that you receive from crowdfunding. Uh, so partly that's where that financial advice that you can get through the Women's Business Center can help you figure out, uh, you know, how is it? How how do I book this? How how do I structure my business to be able to receive this properly so that way I can be able to use this down the road uh, to leverage other funding sources that may be able to build my business even more than the crowdfunding campaign. Excellent, excellent. Diane, any words of encouragement to our Wyoming entrepreneurs out there during this, what we know is a very stressful time? Yeah. Well, I think that one of the things about uh, crowdfunding is it's a, it's a master connecting event for you. And so here we are feeling disconnected because of COVID. And so it's an opportunity to not only reach out to your community, but also to your team. And, I, and, and um, when you use the word brainstorm, I just wanna go back to that because it's so it, it's it's so fun to get together with people and ask them, hey, what do you think would be good rewards? Hey, what do you think would be a good title for my um, campaign? And you'd be amazed at, at what people want to offer just through their thoughts. And then they might get excited to actually be part of your team. So I think that every crowdfunding should be a blast. And so that's what we want to help you have a blast connecting with your team, connecting with your business. It also helps you get connected with, you know, to tell your story. You've heard a lot about how important that is. You, it means you're gonna have to know your story and that's really important. And so um, you'll be connecting with your business, you'll be connecting with your team, you'll be connecting with your community and your customers. And in this time of disconnection, that's a beautiful thing. Excellent. Excellent. And Scott, I've got just a quick technical question. Um, how is a small business taxed on crowdfunding monies that they raise? Is it just so, income? Yeah, usually it's considered either income or revenue, right? In that sense, because it's, it's going to be money in, uh, especially to your business, right? So that's where, depending on how your entity is structured, may make a difference from the sole proprietor versus a C corp or something like that, right? How can you use that but ultimately really what you want to pay attention to is if you don't spend the funds that you actually receive through your crowdfunding campaign in the same fiscal year you could be on the hook uh for the tax implications right that's ultimately what what you want to be looking out for so if you raise funds you close your campaign in november and you haven't spent it until january or february the following year that could be an implication so that's another thing to consider as well where once again having a financial person uh, in your corner giving you some ideas of budgeting and everything else that's also considerations that you can be sure to be safe and secure on right so essentially it's taxed it's taxed as sales or income or revenue you know you Correct. would just create a line item um, that says this is the income that i earned this year through crowdfunding um, and then whatever the expenses are in your business would go against your revenue right and right. and you subtract one number from another, and that tells you what your net income is. So if any of you ever need any help on the bookkeeping side, please feel free to contact the Women's Business Center. It's what we do. We're happy um, to assist you, you know, looking at those numbers. So I just wanna close out our question series um, with really more of a comment that someone shared, says, so very helpful and so encouraging. I wouldn't be able to access or afford this expertise on my own. And um, I think that's a perfect close because that's exactly what we're here for. So I wanna thank my panel once again for joining us today. Thank you so much for the time and attention that you give to the Women's Business Center and to all of our clients. Um, I'll let you guys go ahead and shut off your webcams now. Um, and I'll just go through a couple closing slides, thanking our funding partners today. Um, the primary funding for the Women's Business Center comes through the Small Business Administration as well as the Wyoming Business Council. And so we're thankful for all of our supporters and the guidance of our partners. And we always look forward to the work ahead. Um, this is some contact information. If you are interested in crowdfunding or in the COVID-19 program as a whole, your first step 
is to sign up and reach out, talk to Veronica Donahue. Um, all roads go through Veronica first, um, and then we will parse out to the various projects or programs that you're interested in. So her email address is up on the screen right now. You can always go to our website at wyomingwomen.org and also find information there. And so at the close of this webinar, um, a survey is going to pop up on your screen. And I'm just going to ask you to stay on the line for another you know, 30 seconds and just answer five or six quick questions for us. We really do read every single survey. And your feedback is important so that we know what type of offerings we can offer in the future and what kind of support our clients truly need. So again, thanks for everybody attending today. Hope everyone has a safe weekend and good holiday coming up. Bye-bye, everybody.